I'm going to kick off because they, you know, they say beauty before age. Um, I thought it was age before beauty. No, no, it's definitely beauty before age. Okay. Uh, Terry, which title are you most proud of? Um, I mean, I was always most proud, weirdly, of um, the, the nine finals at World's Strongest Man because that was a record for a little while, nine consecutive finals. Although it's not a title as such, um, that would have probably been it because obviously it shows you're consistent. Yeah. You've done a lot of years of being top 10 in the world. It really does show the consistency. But I mean, probably the Masters World Strongest Man was a recent one after coming back from my first bodybuilding show. And yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. I guess as well, like for a long, long time, you prioritise World Strongest Man even over Britain's Strongest Man with your performances. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of times when you were the most consistent Brit at, at Worlds, you know, competing. So, yeah, well, I mean, I always sort of saw it and it always seemed to fall, fall wrong as well. Like, and, and obviously, you know, as well as I, you can't be in shape all year round. No. So, you've got to look at it and go, what's most important to me, winning Britain's Strongest Man or trying to win World's Strongest Man? And um, I always felt that that was more important to me. For sure. Um, so what about yourself Bish what are you most proud of oh, definitely for me uh, it'll be you know Britain's in 2020 that was a kind of a big moment for me um, you know I've been in the sport for like 10 years at that point so it's not like it happened overnight but nah. getting that victory at Brits any time you put your name on a title was you know it's huge for me and at the back of that as well you know the same year I got sixth at, at Worlds um, which was, was huge for me, especially yeah. because it was a difficult year with COVID and everything. So, yeah, probably the, the British title is one that's just, can be never taken away from you. You know, it's always yeah. on the on the trophy. So I'm very proud. Well, of that's that. what they say. It? Once once a president, always a president. Yeah, yeah. Once you won, I mean, people still even now like call me Britain's strongest man. Yeah, I won it like what 15, 16 years ago. If you won a sword, that was yeah. pretty cool, right? It was a pretty cool sword. Yeah, it was a pretty cool sword. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of once you've won that title, you will always be that almost, in my opinion. Okay, so uh, in all the years you've competed, uh, what's been the most impressive performance you've seen by an athlete? That's a tough one. Um, it's probably not what most people would expect. I think, mean, for me, the two most impressive, oh, I've got, I'd have to say three, have been like Marius, Big Z, and Brian Shaw. All three of them, when they're on all form, are just unbelievable to watch, but... In recent years, I mean, I, I remember watching um, Novikov a couple of times and there was one uh, show that we I was refereeing at. And I was watching him and I was just like, oh my God, like this guy is just unbelievable. He was just yeah. winning events, wasn't even out of breath. It was one of the most impressive performances. But I'd say as a single event, probably my favourite performance I've ever sort of experienced, uh, been there, was watching um, Big Z on the log. Yeah. 2011 world strongest that was man. insane because there was a big chat about like I think it was Poundstone was saying oh, I could do I could do 12 and all this and he went out and did I think about eight or nine reps and it or it might even have been seven yeah and then Big Z goes out there and just absolutely smashes it and like walks back and just and Big Z you know what he's like he's quite quiet and everything yeah. he's just like I could have done more if I'd have needed to, and he and he and he could have. It was, it was out, of, out of character as well, because you know, like yeah. I said, he was you know, usually just focused on the event, but yeah. to, to see him go and like unleash on that was like insane. I mean, unbelievable performance, and um, that put him back into contention for winning the show. I mean, Brian ended up winning in the end, but it made it so close going into the stones, and and um, made it a really exciting finish where he really sort of put the put the hammer down and showed everyone just how good he is. Yeah, for sure. Um, as a scholar of the sport, do you follow the training principles or particular aspects of any other athlete in strongman? Um, yeah, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? You, you, you do build your own program. I'm a massive one for everyone's got an individual program for them. No, mm. you know what I do wouldn't work for you. It wouldn't work. You know what Brian does wouldn't work for me. But I think just the way they approach the sport and how you know their attention to detail. Yeah, Brian's been a massive, massive yeah. influence. But I think everyone, you know, who, who's gone like and turned professional after that, the way he, you know, he looks at the events, breaks down everything, you know, his recovery, his, his nutrition and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, from a training principle, you know, I don't train like Brian because uh, I'm not Brian. Um, but definitely his the way he approaches the sport in general, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think um, exactly what you're saying, like the guys... All the top guys, their attention to detail is unbelievable, mm. yourself included. Mm. Looking at every little aspect of the sport and breaking everything down to 
such minute things to get the most that you can out of out of your performance. And I think, like you said, you know, guys like Brian, I think he was one of the first to really go to those depths, and now everyone's doing it. Yeah. And it's, I think it's fantastic to see the evolution of the sport. So uh, in 2021, we were in the group together, uh, and you tore your bicep on the the first event. Uh, you then stepped up, helped me out, um, and made it probably a little bit worse on that deadlift yeah. deadlift for reps event. You know, helped me out making the final. Uh, do you regret that? Not in the slightest. I think I think you the same as me. I think we're all the same. You don't ever want to be told by the doctors you can't carry on. Yeah. You know, especially like I'm a quite a stubborn man and everything and. Obviously, you know, I knew it would sort of potentially could help you. I actually think it didn't make any difference no, in the end, anyway, no. but potentially it could have helped you. And um, so that was obviously a good thing. We trained together. Yeah. All you know, right, to it, yeah. right up to the world, even though we were in the same group. And um, I suppose for me, I just was like, I want to get out of my shield. I want yeah. this to be my decision. When I pull out, I don't want the doctors to say, you've got to pull out now. It was kind of like a, no, like I'm doing this next event and then I'll pull out because then it's my decision. My, my favourite thing that probably not a lot of people know is um, we were warming up for the deadlift um, and I come up to you and it's really hot out there and I was like, look, mate, I think I'm going to wear, you know, what do you reckon I should do? I, I don't think I'm going to put these straps on my suit too tight. Mm. And you were like, yeah, 100%, that's the right decision. Don't put your straps too tight. So I did that and deadlifted my set. And then Terry comes out and he's cranked his strap so tight, and that's yeah. probably one of the issues with your, yeah, oh, your head nearly blowing. Yeah, I literally felt like my head was going to pop off every time I got <laughs> to the bottom of the lift. I'd done my suit so tight, I could feel my face just getting hotter <laughs> and more swollen with every rep I did. Yeah. It was awful. But, you know, it sort of was one of those where you, you have a little bit of a moment of madness, anything to try and get that tiny bit extra. Yeah. Okay, so you're coming back from injury, um, you injured your tricep training. Um, which obviously is quite a big injury. Mm. How have you managed to sort of um, get over that mentally? And is there any worry still in the back of your mind on that? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was tough. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say it was a breeze. It was 10 times harder having the tricep reattached than the bicep. I thought the bicep rehab was very straightforward and mm. didn't affect me that much, but the tricep definitely has. You know, there was, there was moments at home, like when, especially when my the my scar site got infected, um, and one of my sutures was trying to come out. That you know, I thought that would have been it for me. You know, I had people messaging me online saying it's a real serious injury, you're not going to make it back, which is crazy. Um, but I just took a you know a straightforward approach. I just you know I focused on kind of a little one session at a time, and you know I'm very fortunate. I found a really really good physio, Joe Gallagher, who helped me out massively. Um, in terms of my, you know, my physical treatment, helping out with different things, because you know, my role when I was working in rugby was a rehab specialist. But sometimes you need someone with a different perspective, yeah. a fresh set of eyes to look on it, and that, that's exactly what he did. And yeah, you know, I'm not too not too worried about it now. Yes, of course, I've still got to do a lot more work. Like my prep work for my pressing is is you know is probably as long as my session now, just yeah. to get the tricep ready and and, and firing. But you know, it is that's the sport. You know, the longer you're in this, the more yeah. little injuries you pick up, and the more you got to do rehab and, and yeah. prehab ready before a session. Well, I always sort of um, talk to people when you see someone who's torn a bicep, and obviously I've done a few, and people come to me and they're like, "Oh, you know, have you got any advice?" And always my advice, and it'd be the same for your tricep, is you you got to be prepared for some really dark times mm. um, because mentally to go through that process, you know, when you you physically can't like cook your own food and things yeah. like that is I think people sort of underestimate how frustrating for people that are so active to be in that position where you physically can't move your arm yeah I mean, we go through some pretty dark depressed times that's for sure yeah we're you know the world's strongest man compares my pressing has been getting better but I'm used to putting up like 180 yeah. kilos 220 kilos over my head yeah you know and, and then suddenly I've gone from that to not being able to do a, a skull crusher with a 2 kilo dumbbell you know, it's like when your whole identity is strength, yeah. you know, that's difficult. But, yeah. you know, you just got to focus on just one little session at a time, one little lift at a time, and just, you know, trust the process and you'll yeah, get back. Definitely. Uh, here's a tough one for you. I don't actually think it's going to be that tough. Uh, which sport is better, bodybuilding or strongman? Strongman, obviously. Um, it has to be. Um, I like the bodybuilding for where I'm at in my life and the age I am and everything else so I like the bodybuilding training it's not quite a, as aggressive on your body um, so that is good and obviously it's nice to sort of get in a bit better shave and all that sort of but 
at the end of the day with strong man it's like you either lift it or you don't mm. <laughs> you're either fast than someone or you're not there's no judgement there's no one sitting there going mm, I think he looks like better than him you know there's none of that it's mm. like all of it's everything's in your hands so for me that's what makes strong man so good you can visually see who's the best out of those two guys which obviously makes it good and you know there's nothing cool than lifting like crazy heavy weights yeah. especially when you sort of get into the realms of things that hardly any people have ever done before yeah. you know it's a great feeling and, um, and that's, yeah. we're, not, like, we're not saying it's like it, one's harder than the other because you've got first hand experience about how hard a prep is especially yeah. mentally for bodybuilding two very very different different endeavours aren't they yeah. so but I think the, the mental side of it's the same like right. And this is sort of, um, I mean, we spoke a little bit about it in the past, and we, but it's like you have to literally, they're not sports you can play around with. You've got to be 100% committed. Like your whole life revolves around it. And the bodybuilders are the same as strongman. So if you've got that mindset where you can literally just put everything on the back burner and go, I am focused on this one goal and be hyper-focused on that. If you've got that ability, you can do either. Yeah. And um, I think mentally, it's like it's the same challenge. Yeah, sure. You've got to push yourself to points that you don't want to go to, whether that be through like dieting or being in pain or you know, there's loads of reasons. But mentally, you've got to be able to take yourself to places that not not a lot of people are willing to do. So you're a former pro rugby player. So which for you is more satisfying, the rugby or the strongman? And which you know, which is your Sort of favourite of the two. <laughs> uh, do you know what? When I was working in rugby, I actually find I didn't watch that much rugby. Mm. You know, because it was my day to day. Um, but you know, now I'm, I'm I watch a lot more rugby. I enjoy watching rugby. <laughs> but in terms of actually like, you know, for me personally in my sporting endeavour, like yeah, strongman by far, because it's my improvement is very measurable. Yeah. Like I'm a numbers geek. I love numbers. Love tracking performance. And for me, I can just track that very easily. Look, if I'm honest, you know, I wasn't I wasn't good enough to play, you know, full premiership rugby. I came through the academy, you know, I had a couple of years as a full time player, but what I was was a really good athlete. Mm. You know, I was strong, fit and fast, but probably didn't have a set position on the field. Yeah. Um and, and strongman, you know, it gave me an outlet for me to just use my natural attributes that I had, you know, being strong, yeah. you know, being fast, athletic. And not have to worry about the, the finer details of the, the team sport, you know. So, and I still I saw a lot of guys coming through the academies like that. So yeah. I'm just happy that I found the sport that embraced me as much as kind of I embraced it. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, definitely. It's um, strongman's a great sport, yeah. especially like you said, if you're big, fast, athletic, and have the ability to get strong. It's like the perfect sport for you. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to catch a ball. Perfect. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you win a second Britain's strongest man title. Will you rank yourself higher than me in the all-time list? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's a simple answer because I think for us the, the ultimate goal is Worlds and you've had two podiums at Worlds and I'm yet to have that. So even though I would have one more Britain's title than you, um, I haven't got that podium at Worlds yeah. and that's something I crave. So no, nah, I think I think I, you still got me, brother. Don't I worry. Mean, I mean, like, and this is not, not obviously a reflection on that. I do feel like I was robbed of a few Britain's Strongest Man titles yeah. because my prime years, we didn't have Britain's Strongest Man. No. For, for four years, we missed it. We didn't have the title. And um, there was no competition run. And all those four years, I was the top place in Britain world. Yeah. But, um, so for me, that was kind of frustrating. You know, I feel like I should have had more than one title, but... You know, I don't regret anything. I'm, I'm like pleased with everything that's happened, and um, the fact that there was was no Britain's strongest man for those few years. It kind of doesn't re really matter that much because no, no. it's always like you said that end goal. I mean, does anyone remember who was the British hundred meter champion in certain years? No, they don't. They remember who does well at the Olympics. Yeah, exactly. And that to me is um, is what it's all about. You know. You can only judge how good someone really is when all the best guys in the world are going up against each other. Mm. So even sort of winning a an, an international show that's like a slightly weaker lineup, for me it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. No, Worlds, Worlds is where it's at. It's, yeah. it's the title that everyone wants. It's the pinnacle of the sport exactly. for us. Everyone so. turns up in shape. Everyone nicks points off of each other. That, that's the time that you get the truest reflection of how good everyone really is. So... You know, for for someone like to perform well 
that world's strongest man, you know they're legitimately, you know, like yourself. How many finals you made now? Three? Three, yeah, uh, three finals. I mean, you've yeah. been top ten in the world three times. You've like, yeah. cemented your place as a an elite, top, top elite level athlete. And it's hard because it's, it's effect, Worlds is, you know, two events in one, you know? It's yeah. like you've got the heats, then you're into a completely different set of events for the final. So, yeah, it's, and spread over a lot of time in a foreign country where it's usually boiling hot. Yeah. These are things that people, you know, don't really take into account how, how hard, yeah. like, you know, one gets to that final and then winning World's Strongest Man is. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, and I mean, mentally, the pressure at Worlds is... Insane. Massive as well. Insane. And um, it's almost hard to keep yourself on a level, level sort of place. I sort of was lucky that I had that sort of ability to just be chilled when I'm not competing and... Um, it's, it's a tough thing to get. You always find a lot of guys, as good as they can be, at Giants' lives and things like that, they go to Worlds and they fall to pieces. Just because they don't have that ability to just switch off. Mm. Like you've got it yourself as well. Yeah. You, when you're not doing it, you're calm as you like. You sit there, yeah. laugh, joke. See some of the other guys pacing up and down, pacing up and down, wasting energy, and they fall to pieces. And yeah. um, it's more than just a physical strength thing. It is mental as well. Yeah, for sure. In, in my opinion. There you go, mate. Cheers. Sorry about the hiccups. Sorry. Oh, you got to edit all those hiccups up. I nearly f***ing puked one of the times. <laughs>